You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system is ready to talk one-on-one with you. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's who's a better liar. And now the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. Welcome to Street Justice with Larry Levine and Holly Coleman on BBM Global Networks. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, obstruction of justice. What is obstruction? How does somebody fight an obstruction case? How not to get caught up being in an obstruction case? We're going to talk about substandard lawyers, public defenders, appointed lawyers, private lawyers, and a question I get all the time. Holly, what's that question I get from people all the time? Why do you wear the glasses? Why? Because I fucking can't see unless I wear the glasses. Uh, I want to remind everybody, our no. call number, 866-451-1451. <laughs> Special operators are now standing by to take your call. I sound like that guy late at night on TV, don't I? You do. Uh, you, the life, the life, you get the Ginsu with the lifetime warranty. You know, I always wondered about those commercials. Are they breaking the law by saying lifetime guarantee? Holly, who's lifetime? Exactly. The life, life of the product? Time of who? <laughs> the, the life of the person that bought it? It's probably so, in that little writing way at the bottom, you know, that, that minuscule that we can't see. <laughs> it's like, so if you're dead, does the warranty expire? Hmm. The things that keep you up at night and then make you think even more. Shit, I got I got plenty of stuff keeps me up at night. I you know what? Um just I go over every night before I go to sleep. I think about all the shit I did that day. I think about all the time I wasted. And I think about what I have to do tomorrow. And you know. My mind is constantly running. Well, I had a little video made. I'd like to tell everyone they should go to go to my Facebook page. Go to the Street Justice Facebook page. You know, I've got a competitor that had badmouthed myself. Actually, tried to get Holly into trouble with the probation office. Threw her under the bus. So I made a little video. It's a cartoon. It's got some some audio behind it, a soundtrack, and it's really worth listening to. It's worth watching and listening to. So it is what it is. It is what it is. So, Holly, obstruction of justice. Let's move into this. Yeah. Or should I let you run the show today? You want to run the show? No, I think you should run the show, but I will give you my input on obstruction of justice. Holly's a smart chick. I told Holly (laughs) yesterday, you're like my extra brain. See, my brain Uh power can only go so far so i like plug her in i imagine it's kind of like when you're adding extra memory to your computer you know when you went from two gigs and you got four gigs and then you got 16 gigs you added the extra chips holly is like those extra chips because her and i think alike when we're doing things so i can bounce an idea off her and i know that she'll give me an honest answer back not just an an honest answer, Holly, an intelligent answer, a qualified answer. Wow. What a, making my ego grow big? Really? Love it. And my nose is getting bigger like a fucking <laughs> Pinocchio. No, she's a smart chick. 
If she wasn't smart, people, do you really think I would have a fucking moron on this show with me? Yeah. Come on. Hey, my last show, I had Bruce Cameron on, not last show here, when we were doing on L.A. Talk Radio. We were doing Crime and Punishment. Mm-hmm. Bruce is a psychologist. He's retired yeah. from the prison system. Uh, let's not hold that against him. <laughs> he was smart, too. You know, I have no toleration for fucking idiots at all. They should actually, like, kill themselves or something. <laughs> we don't have time for stupid people. So. We do not have time no. for stupid people. No. So, uh, Holly, <laughs> obstruction. What do you think obstruction of justice uh, Anything is? lying to an investigating officer. Lying under oath in court. Could be. How about... Uh, physical evidence. Let's it's just really- say... That you were, we'll just do a what if. I don't want to mention names. And I'm going to do something very obscure. Let's just say that somebody became president of the United States. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to mention who it is because, you know, it's not important. Okay. Could have been Hillary Clinton for all I know. But uh, <laughs> they, they do several, there's several events that take place, several actions that they direct others to do could even be through a third party and then they attempt to cover it up they attempt to mislead investigators they attempt to prevent other people from cooperating with federal investigators that could be obstruction couldn't it it certainly could how about if you worked at enron and you knew indictments were coming along, haven't hadn't hit yet, but you went through and you shredded everything. Could that be obstruction? Absolutely. What if you were Richard Nixon? You were president of the United States, <laughs> and you uh, he Dick, yes, and he Dick. All of a sudden, there were some tapes. Remember those White House? Are you old enough to remember that? Maybe not. You're we stu- How about this? I studied it. Okay. Somehow there were, I forget how many minutes it is. I'm not going to fucking Google it because it's not important how many minutes oh. it was. But it was in double digits, maybe a half hour, of audio tape that was missing from the Oval Office when Nixon was president during the Watergate investigation. And they later blamed it on his... His secretary, I think her name was Rosemary Woods, if I remember. That's right. It was. It was. That she had her foot on a pedal. In his, in, she was like the secretary. She had her foot on a pedal, and it just so happens, you know, I mean, just so happens that uh, she has her foot on the pedal, and it, it erases, or it doesn't erase, It stops the recorder for X amount of time. Just so happened. It just so happens. Yeah, it stops the recorder. When there was things that were being discussed, that everything else was caught on tape, but that was not. Is that obstruction of justice? Yes, it is. I heard a noise, sound like a horn. Is that on your end? It probably was. I've corrected that. You've corrected the horn? Okay. I've corrected the horn. (laughs) So, I mean, the current flavor in D.C. right now, the District of Columbia, if you're a racist, you could say D.C. stands for dark country. I would never do that because people need to be people. You know, that the current president, uh, we had uh, Martin Luther King's birthday this week, and it was a federal holiday. People were off. And for the last 24 years, I think it is, maybe longer, presidents uh, celebrated. They honored Martin Luther King. Right. Holly, uh, this week, the current president, I don't want to mention names because it wouldn't be right. What, What? Do you have any idea what he was doing maybe on Martin Luther King's birthday while the rest of the country was honoring him? I'm taking a guess, either golfing, which... Probably not due to the weather, but um, anything but honoring the man. Actually, he was. He flew to Mar-a-Lago and he played golf. 
<laughs> he was not scheduled for any events. Uh, so yeah. I don't think he won any African American votes I on that. No. Also, he had a physical, the president, this yes, week. Yes, he did. You know, that's not really obstruction of justice, but it's. Uh, <laughs> Well, anyway, he's six foot three, and his physician, who is a rear admiral in the Navy, it's probably some physician at Walter Reed, I don't know, it's it's the president's personal physician, said that Mr. President weighed in at 239 pounds. Yes, and I don't believe that. I think now, he's much larger than that. They put... A picture side by side on, I think I was on MSNBC, of a man that was six foot three that weighed about 239 pounds. Mm -hmm. And they put this picture side by side with the president. And the commentary was that there's no way that the president is anywhere near 239. This is just another example of the American public being lied to. But some interesting things did come out of the physical. And he passed what? the cognitive test. He's real proud of that. And one of the things he passed, he was able to identify some drawings of three animals. I think there was like an elephant, a rhinoceros. I forget what the third, maybe a giraffe. And he was able to identify those. So because he was, this means that He's not senile and that he's competent and he's, and he's in his right mind. Is that, is that correct? That must be with three pictures. Okay. Three pictures. Yeah. Um, I think we should all give the, the president a hand. and it's, uh, <laughs> I'm clapping. I know you're all clapping out there. That He was able to identify these three animals. Now, also on MSNBC last night, they had a... Retired Air Force, Air Force, what am I squirting? For <laughs> they had a retired United States Air Force physician. Guy retired as a major. I did see him, yes. You, you saw that. I did. And this major is now a psychiatrist in private practice. And they were discussing whether or not the current president would meet the qualifications to be around nuclear weapons. And, you know, there was like a checklist. Holly, you watched it. How many of the criteria did the current man that resides in the Oval Office, how much of the criteria did he meet that would have allowed him to handle nuclear weapons? I think it was... I, it, you tell me. I think it was one. Was it one? One of the criteria, you have to be alive. <laughs> well, he got three pictures right on his physical. So, well, okay. <laughs> you know, right? here's a picture of a button and not a button. Interesting. Well, okay, but it came down to you. Probably saw if you were watching MSNBC, you probably saw the three pictures, didn't you? You know, I didn't see the so I can't tell you if it was really an well, elephant. It, it, it was. I think but, it was. Okay. All right. But the criteria. One. They used, okay, the one. Fine. Okay. He's not trustworthy. <laughs> he embellishes. Mm -hmm. He shifts blame. He, I don't want to say, either he is senile and he forgets, or he's knowingly misleading people. I don't know. Who am I to say? But I, this is somebody who's a mental health care practitioner. Yeah. You know, they say he was a great businessman. Well, maybe he was. How many times did he file bankruptcy? Several. I mean, you've heard about the painters at a tower that's in his name and at uh, some golf clubs or country clubs he owns. These small businesses would bid on jobs, and they would give them just enough money to get started. Then when the job was over and they were waiting for the money, they wouldn't pay them. This is right. all documented. Small businesses that really need this money to make ends meet, keep their operation going, have to go into court and essentially sue and then settle out of court for a smaller sum. Right. Because 
this man decided after the fact, well, they got paid enough. They got enough money. <laughs> but now he may be actually guilty of obstruction. It's it's the whole thing where he bounces back and forth on what he says. And if yes. this had been anyone else at this point, they would already be under indictment and under investigation. Oh, by far. I mean, I know in my case, remember, I got hit with narcotics trafficking, securities fraud, racketeering, obstruction of justice, and machine guns. Now, the obstruction piece, what did they tie that to for you? They think well, you lied? Or well, no, I, you know, I was at a national park. Maybe it was a forest. <laughs> and I urinated in front of the park ranger. And then I walked across the road in front of the park ranger's car, and it wasn't a green light. And then I lied about it. Does that sound plausible? Oh, uh, okay. They said that I wasn't truthful and forthcoming. That's in other words, it kind of didn't meet the criteria. It was almost more of, I don't know. I didn't know the answer. They asked me a question. I didn't know the answer. But the judge... You know, the senile old judge, Carlos Marino, he was a brand new federal judge. Then he got appointed to the California State Supreme Court. Mm. Yeah, at that point, uh, he's actually, he wasn't on the bench that long. He was a muni judge or a superior court judge in L.A. County before that. Mm. But uh, he gave me for obstruction. He ran it all concurrent, so it didn't really matter. They wanted me to tell about people. They wanted me to discuss events. They wanted me to discuss my relationship with people. A, that several of these relationships didn't exist, except in the mind of the confidential informant. You know, to some of the shit they were saying, I'd know the answer to. You know, it's like, okay, Holly, let's say that you're secretly committing crimes okay mm -hmm. and you know other people who are committing crimes but they don't want you to know what they're doing right right so are if they don't want you or anyone to know what you're doing or they're doing are they going to tell you no no this is what these morons could not understand that criminals don't always tell other criminals what they're doing. They keep it a secret because they don't want people to know. But because I wasn't aware of what these other people were doing, mm -hmm. it turned into obstruction of justice. <laughs> because I know that know. <laughs> that may sound kind of crazy, but it is what no. it is. It, the feds are good at this. This is what they... Well, they think that everybody, like... That's like asking somebody, oh, you're a cop. Do you know this person? Yeah, there's only 30,000 cops in the city, but they figure every cop knows each other, you know? It's like every criminal doesn't know each other. I don't know what other criminals are doing. I don't really give a shit. But if they're out there and they're not hurting people and they're just hurting big business or something, God bless them. Go out there. Commit your crimes. When you get in trouble, call us. Holly and I, are, we're here to help you. You know, We'll get you into programs. We'll get you out early. We'll give you straight truth. And we'll move the, uh, the flavor away from the bullshit. Right. But, you know, let's say the, the prosecutor kind of, in some cases, obstructs justice. Let's say that we have a woman working for HP. Hmm. Imagine that. Imagine that. She has access to a corporate card. Yes, she does. And she's buying everything for the department. 
And other and, people in that department are using that card. Holly, you may know this story. Maybe I do. It. it sounds really familiar. Sounds familiar. The prosecutor. <laughs> it's almost like you lived it. The, <laughs> the prosecutor comes in, charges you, and then throws extra shit at you. Tons that, of extra shit. Yes. That they know isn't true. Mm-hmm. So. Are they, and then they file it in court. So isn't, if the prosecutor misleads. It's obstruction. It's obstruction of justice. Uh, yes, it is. It's also prosecutorial misconduct. It is. But it is obstruction of justice. So it's not just on one side. It happens Ever. constantly. In almost every, every case. Every case. Every case. Now, now, here's an analogy I use for for clients and the ones who say they're going to hire me and stiff me and never call back, but I give them a good example. Let's say that the prosecutor takes a big shovel full of horse shit. <laughs> a big shovel. They have big shovels. Big no, shovels. No, shovels, Yes. And they turn on this big industrial fan. Oh. And all the shit goes flying off the shovel. And it hits the wall. Analogy ever. Right there. Those are all your charges. Yes. They have just loaded all this shit onto this shovel. All these charges goes flying off, smacks against the wall. And you know what? Some of that shit's going to stick to the wall. Guess what? Not all of it is. Not all. And some of that shit is going to drop off, and that's what the prosecutor will do. Prosecutor. Every time. Mm -hmm. They will throw all this shit at you. Things they know aren't true. They'll charge you with it. They'll essentially obstruct justice, and they know some of the shit's going to fall off the wall. It just won't stick. Just gravity. You know, the moisture dries up. Whatever. Falls off. Those are all those bullshit charges that you and have. That was the hardest thing to swallow. It pisses you off to a degree that you can't believe that they're committing this over and over and over, and they're not held accountable. It just is mind-boggling. So, Well, you know, I got hit with a ton because I had multiple indictments. Most people have one indictment. And they've got count mm-hmm. one, count two, count three. Well... I had several indictments. Mm-hmm. I had several counts on each indictment because I was committing so many different crimes with so many different groups of people that weren't related to each other that they couldn't throw it on all in one indictment because the co-defendants weren't related at all. Did each time they throw an obstruction charge on each? No. The judge no. Mm-hmm. the judge did that in the courtroom. <laughs> on his own volition, he ah. decided. Okay. So I guess I wasn't charged with obstruction. I was sentenced to obstruction. Okay. Now that I think about it, unless the prosecutor brings that up, that judge may have acted without authority. It wasn't hard. Yeah. Let me think. Huh. To hit me with obstruction. I don't know. Okay. I want to. I want to pardon 20 years later, not that it would make a difference because the obstruction chart or the obstruction carried five years. Okay. But it was run concurrent. So would it really have mattered? No. And you know, that obstruction charge looks, it looks good on my resume. It really (laughs) does. Well, it is used often and... Well, it, to know what it is and and what you're what you're facing, especially when it carries a five year. It shows that I'm not a rat. Absolutely. Shows I'm not an informant. You know, I had a co-defendant in my case who tried to extort ten thousand dollars out of me last year. I hadn't heard from this guy. In, I guess 1998. What did they do? Pick up the phone and call you? Say yeah, we went on. Somehow he found me on Facebook. Mm. And 
saw some posts, started calling me a rat and an informant. And I'm like, "Uh uh-huh, I've blocked him since then. And I said, well, let's see. You and I had identical charges. And I've got your docket here on my screen. And maybe you could explain to me why you got 36 months. And I got 10 years. Can you explain that? And he couldn't. And Mm -hmm. I said, I have all the original paperwork. And I, and, but I wanted to feel the guy out. I says, well, what do you, why do you feel I owe you this? He didn't really try to hammer me. He said, well, cause he had to pay his lawyer. Right. Okay. I said, oh, okay. I get that. I understand. You know, um, but I'm looking at your docket right now and you had an appointed lawyer. So you don't have to pay your lawyer. I said, all this taxpayers paid for your fucking lawyer. (laughs) And he goes, well, you've made a lot of money off this crime, our crime. I go, yeah, I've I've done okay. I said, but I also served 10 years and you served, (laughs) actually got a 36-month sentence and he got into RDAP. Oh, okay. He even did less. Just a slight less. Yeah. Wow. I understand he violated a couple times after he got it. He had five years of paper. But the point is, and he was my methamphetamine contact. But the point, the point is that uh, I told him, well, what have you done to, what have you done to help people since you've been out? What did you do to help people while you were in custody? What is it that you did? I said, you sat around, you watched MTV probably, you bitched and moaned, you jerked off, and you played cards. I said, and when you got out of custody, were you talking about any of this stuff? Were you helping people? Were you going in the news media? And I like said, why weren't you? You know, he was like dumbfounded. And... I said, so I'm not going to give you nothing, not a penny. No. I said, you had the same opportunities I did. You know, um, can't help you out. He started backtracking on my Facebook post. And mm. he started talking shit about me. <laughs> so I got tired of it. I mm. just one day, I just blocked him. Blocked him all together. Yeah. Wasn't you know, helping. He doesn't have respect of the people that I do. Nobody has ever called me a rat or an That's informant. Well. No. It's a well-known fact how much time I got and what I was charged with. Mm-hmm. It's a well-known fact. I didn't rat anybody out. Some people do, but you know that's their own business, what they do. Haven't heard from the guy since. Okay. Not real concerned about it. And you know what? I haven't really ever told anybody until right this minute. Oh. I didn't feel like sharing it, but I guess today I... A Larry story we don't know. uh Uh-huh. Today (laughs) I did. And just like another person who was out there talking shit about me. I don't know why people talk shit about me. If you haven't seen the little junior professor video... For all the junior professors out there, I think you should. You know, um, covers uh, covers a competitor, covers their story. A competitor who badmouthed me covers their story. I wonder if we could even can we play it? Let me ask our sound engineer, AJ. Are you listening? I guess he's not. Oh, Can you, AJ, you watched the video, didn't you? You like that? I wrote that. <laughs> can you? Thank you. Is there any way we can inject that audio into the show? For everybody, you can't hear AJ, but we can. Yeah, so we're, we're not going to try and. 
see if he can't get that to go. It's uh, this isn't like that show Ghost or that movie where we're talking to a non-existent person. But I'm amused about people that talk shit about me. I really am. I feel bad yeah, for them. I do too. For the fact that you're a straight shooter, you're going to tell people exactly what it, what's going to happen, what how to minimize the impact. Um, you helped me in less than three minutes versus months. Months of other people's nonsense. Right. Trying to, I, three minutes and I was able to, to kind of move forward with my supervised release. So. There you go. Yeah. It's funny because a competitor, the <laughs> senior professor. One of them. Is the one who told yeah. you to call me. The prison yeah, professor exactly. himself. He did. He did. He did tell me to pick up the phone and call you. That yes, is he did. But now he has the junior professor working for him. Well, it's kind of like his boy, the junior professor's know. boy. That's how it goes. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. If he can't play that, I could probably hold a microphone up to the to the uh, speaker here. <laughs> but anyway, let's. Yeah. Oh, you. You cannot. Oh. All right. I am going to put my microphone up to the speaker because I can do that. Let's just see if I can do this. And here it goes. And here it goes. <laughs> this story is about Justin's greed and deceit, stealing people's bucks to make his ends meet. His crimes came to an end when the feds broke down his door and took all his cash, leaving him broken and poor. After they had him in cuffs, he ran his mouth like a bitch and gave up his friends as an FBI snitch. When lawyers couldn't help, he called thug Larry Levine, who checked Justin's ass by being ugly and mean. As the judge slammed her gavel with a hard, angry twirl, tears ran down his cheeks like a scared little girl. They put him in cuffs and took him away, off to the big house for a nice, scary stay. All the bad inmates were threatening and mean, so he stayed in his cell and called Larry Levine. When the cell door slid open, home Justin went as the professor's paid boy, singing fake ethics vents. The moral to this story you know will come true, that he lose in the end to a smart, bald-headed Jew. Could everybody hear that okay? You, we, could, we could hear it. AJ's laughing. <laughs> it came through. So it, people, if you, if you haven't seen it, you need to watch the video that... Uh, it's that worth that, it. It's definitely it is worth, worth it. it. It's worth so it. what else are we supposed to talk about today? Well, I want to get to the sunglasses, but I know we need to talk about lawyers. Lawyers. All right. Lawyers. Lawyers. There's a term for a lawyer. <laughs> There's many terms. <laughs> yeah, there is. Uh, what do you call a hundred dead lawyers at the bottom of a pool? <laughs> Scum. <laughs> a good start. A good start. Wait, that's start. right. At the top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I work with a bunch of them. So You do. I do. You do. Well... When you get arrested, all right, the phases. Oh, the phases, yes. Phases of arrest, sort of. I know I've talked about this before, but we're going to tie this into the lawyers. Cops come crashing your door down. Boom. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's probably a little later. They like to do it around. Yeah, 6, 5.30. It's 18 a.m. <laughs> they come crashing through your door like you're Osama bin Laden's little brother. Yes. And put you on the couch. Then they search. They tear your house apart looking for shit that doesn't exist. Right. At this point, you probably have not been indicted. Exactly. Because they don't have all the information they need. So they're still conducting their investigation. Right. A judge has signed a warrant for them to do this. A search warrant. Yes. Search not warrant. Arrest. 
right. based on what's called a criminal complaint. Right. And they're going to look through everything at your place. They could even arrest you if they want, although a lot of times they do not. And they're still gathering all this evidence up. They're going to take it to a grand jury. Mm -hmm. Grand jury is, how many people are on the grand jury? Is it 18 or 20? It's 18. 18 people. They take you to the grand jury. It's like a secret meeting. I like secrets. So they take you to this, they, they take it to a grand jury. I know, I'm thinking though. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, there's silence, the sound of silence. I mean, mine never even went to a grand jury. I just was under investigation, got a plea. The majority, the is, right. You agreed to the charge. Let's say somebody doesn't agree to the charge. Right. They right. take it to the grand jury, and the grand jury gets presented all this evidence. At this point in the game, you may have to appear in front of the grand jury, and the grand jury can question you. Yes. And the prosecutor is going to bring all this evidence and say all this shit that you did and you're involved in. The grand jury will decide whether or not there's enough evidence to indict you. Right. So they have to vote. It's like a ballot. Yes. They say that a, a prosecutor could indict a ham sandwich if they could get the grand jury to agree to it. Right. But you don't get a lawyer at this point. And – if you fail to appear in front of the grand jury or answer the grand jury's questions, do you know what that's called? Or are we going back to obstruction? No. There, see, Holly <laughs> knew the answer. I told you. Smart chick, huh? Yeah. It's called true. obstruction of justice. Now, Congress can hold hearings, almost like a grand jury, but not exactly. I don't know that Congress can bring charges against you. That's why we have a a special prosecutor for somebody who may or may not be the president. <laughs> but the grand jury then decides to indict. And at this point, if you remember back when you were a kid watching Adam 12 and you wanted to be a cop, oh, Adam, you people, oh, yeah. the Miranda rights, you have the right to remain silent. If you give up that right to remain silent, anything you say, and I mean anything, Anything. Anything. Can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to have an attorney present during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed to you. Do you understand these rights? Well, when they tell you you have the right to remain silent, I suggest that you really, really, really remain silent. You don't have to. You, you do don't not have to say a word. That's right. You don't have to give the FBI any information other than your name, right? Your name, maybe what your birthday is, so they could verify it's you. Right. That's it. Nothing else. You, Nothing. you shouldn't say anything without your lawyer there, because they will try to fuck you later. They oh, will. No. Yes, they will. And those cops, Holly, do they know that technically? that uh, people are entitled to, well, not technically. The cops know that people can refuse to answer, don't they? Oh, they know. They know. But, but they will lie and mislead, won't yes, they? Yes, they will. And they try to do that. They actually huh? willfully do that. They do. They try to make you scared. Well, yes. we could let you, you know, if you cooperate now, we could make it easy on you. It's like, really? Right. Right. Which is this, you know, standard BS standard line. Bullshit. <laughs> First right. of all, mm -hmm. that FBI agent who is questioning you has about as much authority to let you go and not charge you as a hair on the back of my ass. Exactly. <laughs> How's that for an analogy? That is. And I think people need to understand that you cannot get, you cannot tuck your way out of it. Keep your mouth oh. shut. If the U.S. attorney has gone to the judge along with the agents and they've sworn an affidavit, cops come or the feds come busting your door down, short of you being found not guilty, 
they're not just going to drop the charge, especially on the word of that agent. He has no authority. Right. He is there to investigate and present evidence mm-hmm. to That's the it. U.S. attorney, to the prosecutor. Yeah. Yeah. So it's at this point, after you have been arrested, if you cannot afford a lawyer, they will appoint one to you. And not all public defenders are bad. Not all of them are good either. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. But there's different kinds. Let's let's quiz Holly right now. I'm going to think about the answer. Let's see if Holly guesses. Uh, um, hmm. Haunted okay. Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean. What's the answer? Johnny Depp. Um, <laughs> a mouse. <laughs> floppy ears. Mickey, Disneyland. Why? There you see, she's smart. Okay. <laughs> so, I told you she was smart. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's two kinds of lawyers. Is that what we were talking about? My mind we drifted. DA. We're all, all right. About lawyers, yes. Lawyers. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know where my mind went. Public vendor, yes. In the gutter somewhere. Okay. So you get popped and you get a lawyer. Now, you can get – there's three like kinds of lawyers – there is a public defender that actually works for the public defender's office. They are a federal government employee. They do not work for the executive branch of government. Right. They work for the judicial branch of government. The prosecutor works for the executive branch of government. So you can get a lo- appointed this public defender who will handle your case from beginning to end. They have all the resources – of the government behind them, investigators. I mean, there are some cheap public defenders that, you know, they try not to spend the money. Right. But essentially they've got like a budget, but they've got all these resources. Now let's say that you have co-defendants and they also have to get a lawyer. They can't afford one. They need an appointed lawyer. Well, what will happen is they will get, that individual, what's called a panel lawyer. Panel lawyer is a private lawyer that is appointed by the court to essentially represent you. And um, panel lawyer, Holly, how much do you think the panel lawyer gets? Nothing. No, they got to get something. Well, I mean, their regular salary. No, the panel lawyer is a private lawyer. Oh, it's a private lawyer. So yeah. what? I mean, on a conviction uh, or just you represent someone. Do you know? I don't. That lawyer is going to get between five thousand and seventy five hundred dollars. That's it. That's it. And mm-hmm. they also have to pay their paralegals. Mm-hmm. They have to pay for printing and copying. They have to maintain office space. Remember, these are private lawyers you can hire. They sign up with the federal bar as a panel lawyer under Section 6004 of the Criminal Justice Act. They're called CJA lawyers. Okay. You've probably seen that on a judgment? I have. Okay. That is what a CJA lawyer is. Now, this person may have to appear in court several times. Do you really think that the CJA lawyer (laughs) who's only getting $7,500 – remember, this is all federal, so this doesn't apply to state or county. Okay. The CJA lawyer, is he really going to be that hot about taking it to trial and fighting your case? I doubt. It's highly doubtful. Yeah. It's – no. The CJA lawyer will try to plead you you out. out. Yes. Holly, you had a paid lawyer, didn't you? I had a paid lawyer. Yes, I you, did. How much did you pay that lawyer? Do you want to say? Oh, I can a uh, hundred grand. Hundred thousand dollars. Well, Holly's rich. Holly, will you adopt me? <laughs> Wish I was rich. Wish okay. I took everything I had. Okay. Everything I had. Um, so Holly and, paid a work for him. <laughs> yeah, she ended up getting a job with him. Okay, yeah. with the firm. Holly but, paid a hundred grand for her lawyer. Now. Holly, you didn't take it to trial. You pled it out, right? I did. 
I did. All right. And, mm -hmm. Did the dollar loss, and I know that they fudged on the dollar loss. It wasn't they right. Did. They did. Okay, but it reached a point you really couldn't fight it anymore because there was a trade kind of going on. Right. But did it go to sentencing guidelines, the dollar loss and your, your time? It did. It, it did. it did match up. Okay. So you paid your lawyer a hundred grand. Let's say Holly had been destitute, you know, and, yeah. didn't have any money, but she was still involved in a multi, well, that wasn't even multi-million, almost a million dollar credit card, alleged credit card fraud. Let's say Holly was an alcoholic. Holly was selling her blood, stand at the blood bank. Let's say Holly was a low life. Not that all <laughs> low lives get public defenders. Right. Okay. So Holly has no resources. Holly commits the same crime. She gets a public defender. Public defender is going to use what book, Holly, to determine how much time you should get? They're going to look at the sentencing guidelines. They're going to look at exactly. They're going to look at the same thing the paid lawyer looked at, aren't they? they? Sure are. Same so, thing. Your offense level for your crime, it would be the same, wouldn't it? Yes. No, no the, difference. The dollar loss would have same. been the same. So when you, you have to weigh it. You have to, have to say, okay, go with a paid or if you don't have the means, public defender. Okay. Essentially, could the public defender had got you the same amount of time as the yes. private lawyer? Yes. And it wouldn't have cost you anything. Correct. Nothing. The panel lawyer who got the $7,500, he only wants to make three or four appearances. The public defender will fight harder for you, even though it'll be the same sentence. Right. Because they get a paycheck no matter what. They don't have all these expenses. A lot of these panel lawyers, they call them dump trucks. They just want to plead you out. They don't give a shit if you're innocent. Right. They will direct you to take the deal, take the deal, take the plea. Mm -hmm. They don't give a shit. They really don't. Now, in Holly's case, was it almost a million dollars, Holly? Just right under. They wanted to go for a lot more. They started at $2 million. <laughs> Who got the points off the credit cards? Oh, let's not go there. Oh, okay. let's exactly not go there. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I got a million points. Okay. <laughs> Who got to take the free vacation? Yeah. So the private lawyer and the public defender and the appoint the uh, panel lawyer, they all use the same playbook. Prosecutors using the same playbook. They do. This is I ran into a lot of people, though that were actually innocent of several of their crimes. Mm -hmm. Pro the, uh, the panel lawyer didn't care. He just went ahead and wanted to get him in, get him you out. You need to just plea make, plea. sign the plea. You're screwed. You're not going to do any better. Mm -hmm. This is how much time that you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't be doing any worse or any better. Not really, but what if that private law, that pay that uh, panel lawyer, that CJA lawyer? What if you were actually wanted to go to trial? Do They're you not, know they yeah. have they have to take have you to, to trial? They have to take it if you choose to do it. So then you have to look at it. How much work are they really going to do? They're not. No, they're not going to do much work. These lawyers are called dump trucks. These dump trucks will essentially throw their client right under the fucking bus. I've seen it for years. I get calls from people all the time. I go like, well, why did your lawyer do this? Why did you, I don't know. And that's what did you, I don't know. <laughs> what did you pay for your lawyer? Oh, um, he was appointed. Was it a public defender? No, he's a real lawyer. I go, well, no, they're all real lawyers, but he was a real lawyer. I didn't have the public defender's office. They don't give the best advice in the world. They really, really don't. Mm -mm. You know, and Holly and I aren't lawyers. No, we are not. We are not, but we're custody advisors and prison consultants. 
But we can take a look at your case and explain your case to you, explain the ramifications of taking that plea agreement, right? of what you're charged with, and tell you, well, this could happen or that could happen. We can tell you, well, this could come with this outcome or that outcome. We're not giving you legal advice. We're advising you on how the law works. That's not that's necessarily the same thing. It's not, yeah. I know there's a fine line there, and I'm the king of gray areas and loopholes. <laughs> but the point is that just because your lawyer tells you something, and there's plenty of good lawyers. I got a, I've got friends that are lawyers. Mm-hmm. Just because a lawyer says something doesn't make it so. That just, is exactly it. Yes. Doesn't make just, it right. Doesn't make it so. Just because a prosecutor says something doesn't make it so. Mm-hmm. You got to understand that uh, well, these lawyers are just full of shit. <laughs> they are. It's like them hitting me with charges. I got hit with all kinds of charges. Yeah, you did. That I wasn't even guilty of. They knew it. They were doing a squeeze play on me. So they obstructed justice. Yes. I had a really, really good lawyer, Callie Clanton Steele. Smart like black chick. USC Law. I don't know if she was on a scholarship. Very intelligent. She was pregnant at the time she became my lawyer. Maybe she got pregnant. I don't think. Well, anyway, she'd just been married not long before she was my lawyer. She worked for the Federal Public Defender's Office in L.A. She's still there. Mm-hmm. And now she's a supervisor, although, hell, maybe at this point she's getting ready to retire. I don't know. She took me all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, said I was the best client she ever had because I knew my case. I knew I studied this shit. I learned the law. I was able to tag team through my case with her. And, you know, I got the 10 years, which I guess it could have been a lot worse. But the point is, that's a rarity. She was a good lawyer. So if you're involved in a case, I don't care if it's a criminal case, a divorce, personal injury, a civil matter, you have a responsibility to examine the law yourself. Yes, know it. Just don't believe the lawyers. Holly, in a divorce, who's the big winner? (laughs) The woman. (laughs) No, it's the lawyer. Hands down, it's the lawyer. The lawyer. Explain to our listeners why the lawyer is a big winner in divorce. Because he's going to make all the money. He is going to, well, in some cases, they drag it out. And why do they want to drag it out? Earth and back and forth. More money. More money. So the two lawyers in the divorce for the petitioner and the respondent the likelihood these lawyers, they know each other, don't they? They do. And you'd be surprised behind closed doors that they have a talking relationship and how they talk to each other and how they talk about your case. And mm-hmm. They drink yeah. together. They, they socialize do. together. They Absolutely. golf together. Yes, they, they do. They cheat on their wives with the same women <laughs> together. <laughs> they I do. Just, but yes, they. that's yes. Then, yes, when there's no more money left, it's done. The (laughs) case, it's time to settle. Yes. And that is the sad truth, people, of things that happen with these lawyers in our judicial system. So it doesn't matter if it's a civil lawyer, if it's a divorce lawyer, or if it's a criminal lawyer. You have a responsibility to become proactive And to know your case. Yes. To understand. Lawyers try to keep things a mystery. Everything is a mystery. Yes. In theory, if I hear that again. In theory, it could be this. Or it could be this. Or it could be this. (laughs) And of course, paying somebody, you want the answer. And that's where you need to be proactive because that's what you're going to get from an attorney. It's like maybe. Yeah. And then ask your lawyer how much time you're going to get. 
lawyer, they don't know. I hear all the time from people, my lawyer said I was going to get probation. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you're going to get probation? Based on what? And they can't answer. Uh, because my lawyer said. My lawyer said. I said, that lawyer, again, has about as much authority to get you probation as a hair on the back of my ass. It's not up to him, just like it's not up to the FBI agent to decide whether or not you're going to be charged or not. Our producer has just told me that we have like one minute left. So one or two things will happen after the on our break. Either we will be back. We will discuss this. I was actually supposed to do a different show. But the other individual I was going to do the show with, who knows where the fuck he's at. <laughs> so we will either be back or we will run a rerun. And you won't know until after the break. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. And I will start that segment by saying, hi, we're back and we're on live. If you don't hear me say, hi, we're back, we're on live, it's a rerun, folks. How long till the how long till the break there, AJ? Forty seconds. I can count to forty backwards. All right. Here's why I wear the sunglasses because it oh. makes me look like an asshole, and that's what people want. No, it's because when I go on TV and the lights are on me, it's kind of intimidating and everything going on. I put on the glasses and I close my eyes, and nobody knows it. I'm not reading a script or anything because I know this shit off the top of my head. It actually relaxes me. It's just like the way I'm talking to you right now, and they're talking to me. Nobody knows my eyes are closed, but if I have the glasses uh, on. Uh, this is this is truth, huh? It's truth or dare. <laughs> anyway, we're like six, five, four, three, two, one. Tune in next week for more straight up, no holds barred talk from the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.